Well, we welcome everybody back here to Desert Hills High School in St. George. Great to be with everybody as we get ready for game three of our afternoon. It's the Spanish Fork Dons and the Juan Diego Soaring Eagle. Great to be with everybody once again as we settle back into the Landmark Insurance Invitational in the Constellation side of the bracket here where right now the Spanish Fork Dons who took a tough 4-3 to three loss earlier in the day to Pleasant Grove on a comeback that just came you know, one run shy. The Dons will try to bounce back and play Juan Diego, who they already met yesterday. And they, in fact, they won by the 10 run rule over Juan Diego. So it should be a fun, entertaining ball game here to see what happens here. This is a Juan Diego team, though, that is playing some of their better baseball of the weekend here in their last couple of games. And so it's going to be one of those contests where don't let what happened yesterday fool you. This is a pretty good Juan Diego team. Uh, tonight, Spanish Fork will turn to number 16, Colby Gammon, to be on the hill for the Dons as he will get ready to go. He's just completed his warm-up tosses, and we are just about set, ready to go for baseball here. The lights are on, overcast skies, and we welcome everybody back in as we'll get set as Dalton Stiefel will get ready to step in the batter's box here for Juan Diego. Stiefel last night against Desert Hills led the game off with a home run to deep right field to get the scoring started for Juan Diego. Gammon kicks and delivers the first pitch for ball one. One ball and no strikes. We're underway at about 425. And the two-hour time limit will get ready to begin. We're set and ready to go. Gammon ready to to go on the mound. He will wind and deliver the pitch home. And that one misses low ball two. Two balls and no strikes. We'll give you the Juan Diego batting lineup kind of as we go here in the top of the first inning. Colby Gammon, the right-hander, ready to go. The 2-0 pitch on its way in there for a call strike. And it's two balls and a strike. Dawson Stiefel leads it off in center field. Phil, uh, Phil Hamill, the second baseman, hits in the two spot. Uh, Colin Helgeson, the catcher, hits third. Easton Rex will hit cleanup. That one misses for a ball. And it's 3-1 and one the count here on Stiefel. Uh, Cooper Russ, the second baseman, will hit in the five spot. Matt Anderson behind the plate hits sixth. Jared Perry in left field will hit seventh. Uh, Campbell McGrain, the third baseman, hits eighth. And then rounding out the order and batting ninth will be Dalton Gray. Colby Finn will play first base for the Soaring Eagle, but will not... Uh, be um, hitting in the lineup. Stiefel hits this one to right, and it's going to fall for a base hit in front of Brendan Bradford, and Juan Diego's got the leadoff man on here in the top of the first inning. Defensively for your Dons in the outfield, it's going to be Jackson Higginson in left, Brady Brook in center, Brendan Bradford in right. Tay Newman at third, Devin, or sorry, Tanner Argyle at short. It's going to be Andrew Pintar at second, Briggs Newman at first, Josh Cowden behind the plate, and Colby Gammon on the mound. So Phil Hamill, the second baseman, will stand in. He'll square around a bunt, and he squares it down the first baseline, but it goes foul, and it's no balls and a strike here on Hamill. Gammon will work from the stretch here for the first time this afternoon. Takes a look in, looks in over at first, and now on its way, pulls the pitch back, takes it for a ball one. One ball and one strike the count here on Phil Hamill. Following our ball game here, we'll have a, another short break, and then we will have the Payson Lions and the Maple Mountain Golden Eagles. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch. That one will be pulled back and taken for ball two. Two balls and a strike. And that will conclude our coverage, by the way, of the tournament down here in St. George. There's both the Dons and the Golden Eagles at the same tournament at the same time. That doesn't happen very often in the preseason or in the non-region play. And then it will be time for Region 8 Baseball on Spanish Four Community Network. Here's the 2-1 pitch about to come home from Gammon, and that ball is going to be hit hard by Hamill, and that's going to fall right in front of Bradford. Stiefel will hold it second, and back-to-back -back singles, and Juan Diego has a pair of hits off Colby Gammon, and here comes Colin Helgeson, the catcher. Juan Diego is a pretty quick starting team with the bats. They've 
They've done that the first couple of, of times I've seen them here. They got off to a pretty good start earlier in the morning against Payson and a game in which the Soaring Eagle, well, they got off to a slower start today, but then had the big five-run inning to come back from behind to beat the Payson Lions. Helgeson, the catcher, stands in. Gammon will kick, and here's the turn square shows bunt. Pulls it back and takes ball one. One ball and no strikes on Helgeson. No score, top of the first inning here on Spanish Fork 17, just underway. Game three of four today. Gammon will take a will take a step off the pitcher's mound here as the breeze continues to blow down here in St. George. We've seen it kind of slowly continue to pick up as the day has gone on. Helgeson shows bunt, pulls it back, and takes it low for ball two. Two balls and no strikes. And now a quick meeting out to the mound, something Spanish Fork doesn't like to see here from Colby Gammon. The Dons dropped that game to Pleasant Grove a few hours ago. The 11 a.m. semifinal dropped a, a tough 4-3 to three decision. They were held in check by Logan Hooley, who, went, uh, who ended up going most of the distance for Pleasant Grove. And when they did that, that really kind of put a, a better situation on here for the... It didn't really put a better situation, but just allowed Pleasant Grove enough runs, got enough support to be able to hold them on. They had that controversial call that was kind of a call that got changed as they batted out, the Vikings batted out of order, and it just seemed to kind of alight the fire as Helgeson will bunt that one foul down the line, and the Cal moves to one and two. That call really kind of changed momentum, of course. After that, Pleasant Grove added a run or two. And when the Vikings added that extra run or two, it made all the difference after the three-run homer by Cy Nielsen that really brought the game back within one in the seventh inning and had even one less run scored. Who knows what would have happened? Two balls and one strike to count. Gammon takes a look at second, and the pitch on its way. The 2-1 pulled back and taken for a ball. It's 3-1 and one the count on Colin Helgeson. Fastball count here for the right-hander, Colby Gammon. Infield up the middle will play kind of similar to a double play depth right here. And here's the 3-1. That one's going to miss inside ball four. And the bases are loaded for Juan Diego. Nobody out here in the top of the first inning. A great opportunity for Juan Diego to get a couple of runs early on. In that game yesterday, we talked about Juan Diego. They got off to a quick start against Desert Hills last night in that late game. And the Soaring Eagle gave up the lead late in that one. Or else Juan Diego would have been playing in the semifinals. It would have been Desert Hills that would have had to turn around and play the morning game here against Payson this morning. That one misses inside and tight to Easton Rex for ball one. One ball and no strikes. So a single by Stiefel, Hamill followed with a single, and then Helgeson follows with a single. So three, sh or sorry, Helgeson walks. Three straight base runners in the pitch on its way, misses low, ball one to Rex. Colby Gammon having an early hard time finding the strike zone, and with that being said, it looks like a Spanish fork will get somebody throwing down in the bullpen. A 2-0 pitch on its way. Gammon misses that one low ball three. It's three balls and no strikes. That is Parker Harrison, number six, beginning to get loose down in the Spanish Fork bullpen. Just four hitters into, into the ball game here. No score, top of the first inning between Juan Diego and Spanish Fork. Here's the 3-0 pitch on its way. That one gets in there for a called strike to Rex, and it's three balls and a strike. Juan Diego wearing the white tops and white pants that say Juan Diego across the chest. Spanish fork, red tops and white pants. The pitch misses ball four, and that will walk in the game's first run. And head coach Casey Nelson, I think, has seen enough. I think we're going to have a pitching change here uh, already. Give 
credit to Rex for the RBI. Everybody else moves up. one nothing. Juan Diego. As Colby Gammon just struggles, and the ball will be taken, and we will have a new pitcher already coming into this ball game. Parker Harrison will be the new pitcher, the right-hander, who will come in here to face the right-hander. So Gammon really doesn't last very long in this one. Only faces four batters, allows two hits, allows two walks, and all the runners on the base pass are responsible for him and Cooper Russ is going to come to the plate here. Now one thing you have to kind of think and we'll see this with Maple Mountain here in a couple of hours is you're in the semifinals both Spanish Fork and Maple Mountain went 2-0 and in pool play were the number one seeds out of their pool and they both lose and so it's something to kind of keep in mind to see how excited Spanish Fork and Maple Mountain get about playing in a second game. You would think they'd be excited because even though it's a not it's a it's a tournament setting, it's still one of those things, the whole point of it is just to get a number of games in before you start region play next week. And you're gonna get region play started on Tuesday at Nelson Field where the Dons will be at home for the Maple Mountain Golden Eagles. On Thursday they'll play over at Maple Mountain High School. That one will be live here on SFCN. So it should be a fun way. That will be a th uh, schedule for a 3.30 first pitch. It should be a fun one. Uh, Parker Harrison uh, going through his warm-up tosses on the mound here. One more game for us here coming up following this one. Maple Mountain taking on uh, the Payson Lions, a rematch of a game we saw yesterday. Both these teams ended up playing teams that they saw yesterday. I thought maybe they might reverse it, have Juan Diego play Maple Mountain and then have Spanish Fork play Payson just to kind of split up the teams a little bit and kind of let you get a looks at different people, especially with all three of those, with three of the six teams being from the same region. I kind of thought maybe you might see something like that happen, but it didn't happen according to the schedule. Here's Cooper Russ now. Base is loaded, nobody out. And Parker Harrison's first pitch in there for a called strike, and it's 0-1. Running over at third base, Phil Hamill. At second, it's Colin Helgeson. Over at first, it's Easton Rex. Bases full here for Juan Diego. Josh Cowden will go over the signs here with, with Parker Harrison. Rust will stand in the batter's box here from the left side. Dons will play back in double play depth. They'll trade a run here for the double play. The pitch on its way. Russ swings and hits that ball pretty well out to right. Bradford's going to get back on it. He'll make the catch. Tagging is Hamill. He will score. The throw comes into third. And sliding in safely is Helgeson. And it's 2-0 Juan Diego here in the top of the first inning as Hamill comes in to score. And Cooper Russ did his, does his job right there, gets the RBI in, not having to do too much. The biggest thing, too, to remember if you're Juan Diego, that's only the first out of the inning. And now it's going to bring up Matt Anderson. Anderson will start behind the plate here for Juan Diego this, this afternoon, this late afternoon ball game. And the pitch on its way. Misses low for ball one. One ball and no strikes. They count on Anderson. So you think if the Maple Mountain game would be, you got to think, two hours plus 15, 20 minutes. Maple Mountain game will start probably just a little past 7 o'clock. Here's the pitch on its way. Low for a ball on the count. Moves to 2-0. and Which means the championship game here, slated for an 8 o'clock first pitch, probably won't get underway till sometime around Pass a little bit past nine. It'll be a late night here in St. George. The pitch on its way, swung out and missed by Anderson. Two balls and a strike on Matt Anderson. Runners on the corners here with one away. For Juan Diego, the top half of the first inning. Scheduled to play seven. We do have the two hour time limit though. That's in effect, and so if they don't get the if they don't get the full game in. We've only seen that one time and that was this morning with the Juan Diego Payson game. 
It's the only game to end short of seven innings. That pitch swung out and missed. Strike three, Matt Anderson down on strikes. First strikeout for Parker Harrison, and there's two away, and that's going to bring up Jared Perry. Perry will start here in left field for the soaring eagle of Juan Diego as the Payson Lions down there hitting in the cage. They'll be getting ready for Maple Mountain. Two gone. Parker Harrison ready to go. The pitch on its way in there for a called strike in its own one. The American flag in left center field blowing, kind of swirling around different directions right now. The wind picking up here as it's kind of moderately picked up as we've gone throughout the day. 0-1 pitch on its way, and that one swung on and foul tipped in the glove, strike two, and it's quickly 0-2 on Jared Perry. Campbell McGrain in the on-deck circle wearing number seven. will hit next if the inning continues. The 0-2 pitch as Parker Harrison comes home. Breaking ball called, strike three. And Parker Harrison freezes him, gets the second strike out of the inning. But the damage is done. Two runs for Juan Diego. They get it on two hits, no errors. And then two left on base as we head to the bottom half of the inning. The Dons already in a hole, two to nothing. And they'll take a look here. Let's uh, thank our sponsors for making this broadcast possible today. We want to thank the car guys, Dickerson Automotive, Lance Wilson State Farm, Triple T Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing, Mikel Christiansen and Wise Attorneys at Law, MVP Sports, and Two Jacks Pizza for making this broadcast and our many other broadcasts possible here as we are playing baseball down in St. George. We also want to remind you to follow us on our Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube pages where you can find out about live broadcasts, upcoming shows and events, and f keep up with our SF-17 staff. Just look for Spanish Fork 17. So Spanish Fork will trail 2-0 as they'll face the right-hander Dawson Stiefel will be on the mound for Juan Diego. Juan Diego making the trip up from, or down I should say, from Draper. And let's give you the Spanish Fork batting lineup. Leading off will be Brady Brook. You see him right there. Uh, Tanner Argyle, the shortstop, hits second. Cy Nielsen, DH, will hit third. Briggs Newman will hit cleanup. Brendan Bradford will hit fifth. Josh Cowden, sixth. Uh, Tay Newman hits in the seventh spot. Andrew Pintar hits eighth. And Jackson Higginson bats ninth. Um, pitching, like we said, Dawson Stiefel. We'll go to the mat. Let's give you the Juan Diego defense. Jared Perry in left. Dalton Gray in center. Easton Rex in right. It will be McGrain at third. Rust at short. Uh, Phil Hamill at second. Colby Finn not hitting in the lineup, but will be playing defensively at first base. Catching will be Matt Anderson. And Dawson Stiefel will be on the mound. So Brady Brook will get ready to step in to the batter's box. Spanish Fork wearing the red tops that say, Dons in cursive across the chest and white pants. And Brady Brook will stand in and lead it off. It's 2-0 Juan Diego, bottom of the first inning here as we settle back in for some more high school baseball action on Spanish Fork 17. Brady Brook will stand in from the left side. And we're set, ready to go. The first pitch on its way. And Brook swings and hits this one to center. Dalton Gray will go back and now comes in and makes the catch for the first out of the bottom of the first inning. So one away, here's Tanner Argyle. Argyle earlier had a couple of hits for Spanish Fork. Uh, two singles came around to score one of those runs in the seventh inning. And the Dons lost in the semifinals. Stiefel gets set, comes in. And misses low, ball one. One ball and no strikes to count on Tanner Argyle. Argyle, the shortstop. And the 1-0 pitch on its way. Bounce short, ball two. Two balls and no strikes on Argyle. And that wind picking up. Now it looks like kind of blowing out to left. Now kind of blowing in from left. 
That pitch misses low ball three. Three balls and no strikes on Tanner Argyle. It's been kind of swirling, but this has been the most consistent that it's been here all throughout the afternoon. Here's the 3-0 pitch, misses low ball four. So a four pitch walk here to Tanner Argyle and the Dons have their first base runner of the ball game. And here's Cy Nielsen. Nielsen came up to plate with a uh, came up to the plate with a couple of men on in the game here against uh, earlier today uh, against Pleasant Grove and got up there in the seventh with a couple of runners on. And Spanish Fork really just need to continue what they had going and hit a ball deep to left field that ended up getting out. Here's the first pitch on its way. Nielsen chops that one to third. This could be two. They get the out at second. Hamill with the turn. Over to fit at first, and they turn it. Five, four, three, inning, ending, double play. And the first inning here comes to an end. At the end of one complete from St. George, Utah, it's Juan Diego two, the Spanish Fork Don zero. You're watching high school baseball in Spanish Fork 17. We move to the top of the second inning here from St. George, Utah, and Juan Diego having an early 2-0 lead here on Spanish Fork 17, as it'll be 8-9-1, and one. Campbell, McGrain, Dalton, Gray, and back up to the top, and Dawson Stiefel coming up here for Juan Diego. The Soaring Eagle coming out of Draper. So here's Campbell McGrain, the third baseman, will stand in to lead it off against the right-hander Parker Harrison, who didn't get the start but came in four batters into the game, and there's one swung out and missed by McGrain, no balls and a strike. Good amount of Spanish Fork fans making the trip down. Here's the 0-1 pitch. That one swung out, popped up, and that one's going to go foul, and it's quickly no balls and two strikes. Really a good turnout from every school. Payson and Juan Diego has a pretty good contingent here as well. Here's the 0-2 pitch on its way home. Fastball misses high. It's 1-2 and two on McGrain. A nice weekend tournament that started Thursday night here in Spanish or here in St. George. The 1-2 pitch on its way home. And that one's going to be lifted into center field. Coming in, Brady Brook and... It's, it's going to be Tanner Argyle who takes it about a step onto the outfield grass for the first out of the second inning. Here's Dalton Gray. Gray's played center field. Had a catch, I think it was yesterday, where he went back almost to the warning track and was able to run it down for Juan Diego. And first pitch, bunt shown, lays it down, foul. It'll be no balls and a strike. Stiefel on deck for Juan Diego. You see their white tops and white pants with the curse of it says Juan Diego across the chest. Here's the 0-1 pitch, the kick and the delivery from Harrison. That ball's hit hard off the glove of Pintar into right field for a base hit. When I say off the glove, Andrew Pintar just kind of stuck the glove out and it goes right off it and goes into right field for the leadoff for a one-out single for Dalton Gray. And here's, Dal here's Dalton Stiefel. Stiefel had a single, base hit, and then came around to score. Back in the first for Juan Diego. Right now, working from the stretch, the pitch on its way. Stiefel right past, glove by Briggs Newman, who will then, and that ball, sorry, that went foul down the line. No balls and a strike. No balls and one strike. No balls and a strike to count here on Stiefel. The rocket hit by Stiefel, the home run that he hit last night in last night's contest that went to deep left center field or deep right center field still kind of stands out in my mind. One of those home runs off the bat where you didn't know necessarily where it was going, you just knew it was hit very, very well. The 0 1 pitch on its way is going to be in there for a call strike, and it's quickly 0-2 here on Stiefel. Double play depth up the middle for Spanish Fork with Tanner Argyle and Andrew Pintar. Parker Harrison comes home, breaking ball, outside corner for a ball. It's one ball and two strikes the count.
It's gonna be Dalton Gray running over at first. Briggs Newman holding him on over at the first base bag. Parker Harrison comes set, comes in. And that one misses for a ball. And it's two balls and two strikes to count on Dalton Stiefel. No score, or sorry, 2 nothing. Juan Diego. Top of the second inning. Spanish Fork, the home team in this one. And the 2-2 pitch. That one will go back over to first. And we'll have a 2-2 count here coming on, on Dalton Stiefel. Working here from the stretch. Parker Harrison takes a look over at first. Gray gets his lead, runner goes. That one's gonna be hit to second. Pintar gets there. He'll throw to first in time for the out, but they'll stay out of the double play with Dalton Gray moving up to second base. And with two gone, here's Phil Hamill. Hamill one for one with a single and came around to score the second run of the ball game for Juan Diego. As that wind Continuing to gust up here. Got some stuff here on the table with me and it's kind of starting to blow a little a little bit all over the place. That wind really starting to pick up. If the clouds weren't so light, I would say a storm is getting ready to move through. One ball and no strikes, they count. Lived in the Midwest for a little while and whenever the wind would pick up, you'd look around and the clouds would start to get a little more darker and gray. You knew generally a thunderstorm or something was coming. 1-0 count on the way, breaking ball in there for a called strike, and it's 1-1. One and one. So even now, my natural reaction living in the state of Utah is to look around and see if there's a storm coming. One ball and one strike to count here. Hamill stands in the batter's box. Runner gets his lead at second. The pitch blocked in the dirt by Josh Cowden. And Juan Diego yesterday found out what happens when you run on Josh Cowden as a couple of players got thrown out trying to take that extra base. Josh Cowden threw a rocket down at third a couple of times. He's gonna be a tough guy, a tough catcher to run on in Region 8. That would give the Dons a little bit of an extra adamant, uh, added element of defense behind the plate with having a catcher who can Got him down, the fastball, high ball three. It's three balls and one strike to count here on Phil Hamill. Dalton Gray, the runner on at second base here for Juan Diego, has a 3-1 count on him. Parker Harrison set and ready to go. Here's the 3-1, that one low ball four. So Parker Harrison draws the free pass and Juan Diego is really taking advantage of those extra bases that Spanish Fork has given to them. Three walks here in the early going. Luckily, fortunately, it's been the hits that came around to score, but three walks in two innings. The pitching staff for Spanish Fork struggling a little bit here today. Here's Colin Helgeson, the catcher. He drew a walk his first at bat. That one's in there for a called strike. And so in one. These kind of pre these tournaments that you play in early on in the season kind of give you a preview of how deep your pitching staff might be this early on in the year and they'll look the runner back to second of course when you get to state tournament time the deeper the, your pitching staff the better no balls and a strike the pitch comes inside that one off the plate and the count evens up here at one and one on Helgeson in fact I want to say it's two and oh on Helgeson Two gone here in the top of the second inning. The breaking ball comes in on the outside corner, and that one hit. And they're going to say it's one and two, and I haven't seen the umpire correct it. So one ball and two strikes, we're going to say, on Helgeson. We'll see here if the umpire, if he notices it, but it looks like he's going to keep it at one and two. One ball and two strikes to count, ready to go. Here's the pitch on its way. Fastball misses high. Ball two, and the count evens up. Two balls and two strikes on Helgeson. Parker Harrison, the right-hander, working from the stretch, comes in. Helgeson hits that ball out into the gap. That could be 
Trouble with Brady Brook runs it down. It looked like it was off into the right center field gap, but Brady Brook closed well, and the side is retired. Juan Diego does get the one hit. They leave two. We head to the bottom of the second inning. Two nothing Juan Diego. Let's take a moment here on Spanish Fork 17. Let's thank our sponsors for making this broadcast possible. We got Lance Wilson State Farm, Two Jacks Pizza, Mikel Chris Jansen and Wise Attorneys at Law, Dickerson Automotive, The Car Guys, Triple T Heating, Cooling and Plumbing, and MVP Sports. We thank everybody for making this broadcast possible. We want to remind you to follow our pages on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube to catch up with the latest shows, live broadcasts, and our SF17 staff. Just look for Spanish Fork 17. As our staff today braving the wind and the wet weather, I'm really fortunate I'm under a tent. Our producer's in, in a nice truck, but our camera guys have done such a nice job. I haven't really heard them complain once over the course of the last couple of days as we went from having kind of some wet, rainy weather, but playable weather on Thursday night into the hot sun yesterday. Got a little sunburnt, but other than that, today, I think everybody's doing pretty good. So a great shout out to our, to our camera guys who work so hard and our production crew that gets everything ready. One of them smiling at me right now, so I'm sure they're kind of wondering why I'm talking about this, but they do a great job and we thank them for their hard work and effort. It's gonna be four, five, and six. Briggs Newman, Brendan Bradford, Josh Cowden coming up here in the second. Briggs Newman, the cleanup hitter, will come up here as Spanish Fork went down one, two, three in the bottom of the first inning. Ready to go, here's Stiefel, he kicks and delivers the first pitch, and Newman hits this one to right. Gonna be a long run, it's gonna roll all the way, and it's just gonna kinda sit out there and die. Newman goes into a corner, or goes into second with a, with a double. And so Spanish Fork gets their first base hit of the ball game, that double down the right field line. That we talked about with that rain coming in, we're not sure what the drainage has been like in the outfield, but with some of that rain, sometimes that ball is just going to sit and it just hits that moisture and just kind of soaks in and quits rolling. And right there, it looked like that's what exactly what the baseball did. So runner on second base, here's Brendan Bradford, who would like to build on the game he had in our first one. And that one's popped up down the line and fouled away. Bradford with a pair of strikeouts. Did have a walk in the ball game, but he'd like to, I'm sure, kind of redeem himself, so to speak, here. No balls and one strike to count. Bradford will stand back in the batter's box. Here for Spanish Fork. No balls and a strike to count. Two-nothing lead here for Juan Diego. Stiefel comes in. Bradford pulls the bunt back and takes it low for a ball. One ball and no strikes. Briggs Newman running on at second base. We'll get his lead. Finn at first base playing in on the grass, expecting maybe the bunt to try to see if maybe they'll have a play at third. Pickoff move to second, and Newman gets back underneath the tag. Cooper Russ tried to apply it. Dawson Stiefel on the mound. The right-hander has been in center field for most of the weekend. The 1-0 pitch, bunt shown, pulled back again by Bradford. It's two balls and a strike. Now on Brendan Bradford. Bradford will look down the, get some direction from his dugout. With nobody out, you have to wonder if Spanish Fork might play just to get one back right here, move the runner over to third base, and then try to see if they can knock him in with one out. The 2-1 pitch, Stiefel about to come home with. Bunt shown again. Bradford pulls it back and takes ball three. It's three and one the count here on Brendan Bradford. Two balls and one strike. Stiefel takes a long look at second. And he'll turn and now look. Briggs Newman back to the bag. Maple Mountain and Payson will play for the second time in the tournament. They will get each other right after this one. Here's the 3-1 on its way. Bunt shown, pulls it back, and takes it for a called strike. And the count goes full now on Bradford. Three balls and two strikes here on Brendan Bradford. 
Briggs Newman will get his lead out at second base. Cooper Rush, the shortstop, going to kind of sneak in behind him. Here's the 3-2 pitch about to come home. They kick in the delivery on its way. That one's going to miss ball four. And so Bradford will draw the, the free pass. And Spanish Fork has something going here in the second inning with runners on at first and second. And here comes the catcher, Josh Cowden. Cowden did not play in that game earlier today, which I was kind of surprised about. They went with Skylar Holdrein behind the plate. And Cowden back in the starting lineup today, not questioning Coach Nelson. It's just I'm used to seeing Josh Cowden behind the plate. Cowden will square around a bunt. Finn comes charging in. He's shorter than the pitcher's mound there. That one will go foul. No balls on a strike. Cowden popped the bunt up. It always kind of concerns me when you see the first baseman charge in that far and then you see the hitter sometimes will pull it back. It makes me kind of wonder if you're going to pull it back and swing and you're kind of defenseless. No balls and one strike the count. I've never seen that actually happen and I really hope that I never do. Uh, safety of the player is definitely always a priority. No balls and a strike. Cowden squares around a bunt. Stiefel will throw back to second. That one hit Briggs Newman in the back as Cooper Rust tried to get back over to apply the tag, but good. No balls and one strike the count, and Matt Anderson will go out behind home plate and have a quick word. It's Cooper Rust and Briggs Newman, I think, kind of laughing about it a little bit at second base. Josh Cowden will have a quick word with head coach Casey Nelson, who will look to help guide the Dons to his second state championship. This year, they're, I think they're going to be a tough team in Region 8 this year. I think Region 8 is going to be a three-team race with Salem Hills, Spanish Fork, and Maple Mountain. It could be a really tough, could be a fun year here in Region 8. No balls and a strike to count. Stiefel ready to go and a kick in the delivery. Cowden lays the bunt down to third. Going to be a tough play. Stiefel fields at the throw. It's not going to be in time. Cowden is safe. And the Dons have loaded the bases here in the second. Cowden runs well, and right there, Stiefel makes a good throw, and it was going to be a close play, and he didn't get it. And now we'll see Carson Chapel, number 13, come in and run. So Chapel the run for Cowden, and here's Tay Newman, the third baseman. Bases full of Dons here in the second inning. Stiefel will work here from the stretch. Ready to go. And here's the pitch on its way. That one low and in the dirt for a ball. One ball and no strikes the count here on Tay Newman. Stiefel here in the second. Having a hard time finding the strike zone. Base is full, still nobody out. The pitch on its way. That one's going to be grounded a second. This could be two. It's bobbled by the second baseman. They're going to try to get the tag, and they didn't on Chapel. And coming in to score on the play is Briggs Newman. And it's, the Dons have their first run of the ball game, but still the bases are loaded with nobody out. And here's Andrew Pintar. So Pintar will come to the plate. Right now with the bases full, nobody out. One run already in, 2-1 lead for Juan Diego. And the first pitch to Pintar, misses for a ball. One ball and no strikes to count. This game already close to 40 minutes long. And we're not even through with two innings yet. Not a great precedent with a two-hour time rule that we're going to get all seven in. The 2-0 pitch on its way. They kick in the delivery. Misses low for ball three. And it's quickly 3-0 and to Pintar. Stiefel ready to go. Here's the 3-0 pitch. The kick in the delivery. Misses low. And it's not 3-0 on Pintar. I think now it might be 3-0. I think maybe... I don't know if the scoreboard was a little ahead of the game or or what. Nonetheless, it's now 3-0 on Pintar. Base is full of Dons here in the second. A 3-0 pitch in there for a called strike, and it's 3-1. That fastball coming right in the middle here. 
Payson just it looks like finished up BP. They're having a little team meeting down the line in the bullpen as they await to get ready for Maple Mountain. Here's the 3-1 pitch on its way. That one's going to be grounded to short. Rust goes to second for one. Hamill with the turn in time for the double play. However, Brendan Bradford scores the tying run, and we're tied up at two. So Chapel the third, Bradford scores, and now Jackson Higginson will come to the plate. Higginson will stand in here from the left side. And we'll get ready to go. The infield and outfield will go to their normal positions here for Juan Diego. And that one low for ball one. And really kind of a victory for Juan Diego in the sense to have bases loaded and nobody out to give up two runs but to get the two outs. And you got to credit, not a bad position to be in if you're Juan Diego. Higginson swings, grounds this one, past the diving, thin at first base, and that's an RBI single for Jackson Higginson. And the first, and the Dons have their first lead as Carson Chapel scores. And Spanish Fork seems to be getting something going here in game number two as they'll take a 3-2 lead and back to the top of the lineup in Brady Brook. Brook hit in the first inning, hit a fly ball to center field. That was to open the bottom of the first inning for Spanish Fork. Stiefel comes set, Higginson goes. That one's in the dirt, and you're not going to get Jackson Higginson when that ball goes in the dirt. Uh, Higginson is safe. Probably, Jackson Higginson probably has to be one of the fastest guys, I feel, in Region 8. When it comes to, I don't want to, maybe not the fastest, but definitely has to be one of the fastest. One ball and no strikes the count. Jackson Higginson gets his lead. The 1-0 pitch, and that ball is hit by Brady Brook. That's going to fall for a base hit. Higginson will be waved around third. He will score, and it is now 4-2 to Spanish Fork. The RBI single by Brady Brook. And now the Spanish Fork bats are starting to get going, and Dalton Stiefel starting to get hit around a little bit. And now that's going to bring up Tanner Argyle. Argyle, the eighth Don, to come to the plate here in the inning. And with two outs, a runner on at first base in Brady Brook. Brook with good speed himself. Wouldn't be surprised if he tries to take off sometime during this at bat. Stiefel comes set, ready to go on the mound, and the pitch on its way. That ball is grounded to third. Fielded cleanly the throw across the diamond in time, and the second inning comes to an end. The damage is done, though, for the Spanish Fork Dons. Eight men to the plate, four runs later, and the Dons have a 4-2 lead over Juan Diego. You're watching high school baseball on Spanish Fork 17. Well, we get ready to start the top of the third inning, and... Juan Diego will send up four, five, and six against Parker Harrison. It'll be Easton Rex, Cooper Rust, and Matt Anderson against the right-hander who came in in relief of Colby Gammon and has pitched pretty well. Harrison gave up a hit back in the last inning but hasn't allowed a run. And the first pitch to Easton Rex misses away with the fastball, one ball, and no strikes to count. Maple Mountain and Payson Coming up next here on Spanish Fork 17, we'll have a, another about maybe 20, 25 minute break in between ball games. The 1 0 pitch swung out and missed, and the count evens up at 1 and 1. That game will probably start just a little past 7 o'clock, would be my guess. The 1 1 pitch, the delivery on its way, that one in there for a called strike. It's 1 and 2 the count here on Easton Rex be a late night here with that championship game then starting probably somewhere around 9.30, 9.45. Here's the 1-2 on its way. That one swung off, foul tipped into the glove, strike three. So Harrison gets the strikeout, his third. And now that brings up Cooper Rust. Rust had a sacrifice fly and is only at bat, and that brought home the second run of the game for Juan Diego. At the time, it gave him a quick 2-0 lead, but Spanish Fork found a way to put up a four spot last inning. So Rust ready to go. And the pitch in there for a called strike, and it's 0-1. 
The Dons in their red tops and white pants. Juan Diego, if you're joining us, the visiting team in the all-white. The 0-1 pitch comes in. That one swung on and I believe missed for strike two. And it's 0-2 the count. The umpire making sure Josh Cowden was okay. I think he kind of came up right here. And as that wind continues to kind of swirl all over the place here. Lots of jackets and blankets out at the ballpark. Definitely not the weather you would associate with necessarily with St. George as the 0-2 pitch on its way and that one misses away for a ball and it's 1-2. and two. One ball and two strikes to count here on Cooper Rust. And Rust grounds this one back up the middle for a base hit and Rust will be aboard here with one out. He's going to go to second as Brady Brook had a hard time collecting the baseball out there. Once again, that's where kind of some maybe that moisture starts to come into effect. And so reaching there is Cooper Rust. Here's Matt Anderson. About 57 degrees or so here in St. George. Just kind of what we were expecting. So here's Matt Anderson. Anderson went down on strikes back in his first at bat. And the first pitch there misses for a ball. One ball and no strikes to count on Anderson. On deck, it's Jared Perry for Juan Diego. A 4 3 lead right now in favor, or sorry, a 4 2 lead in the third inning. And that was going to be grounded to third. Tay Newman will look the runner back, throws to first. Newman will snap throw down to second. And Andrew Pintar able to collect it as Cooper Rust was kind of bouncing around like he might try after Tay Newman threw over to first, like he might try and break for third. But Briggs Newman fired to second to end that thought. Here's Jared Perry. Perry 0 for 1 went down on a strikeout back in his first at bat. Ready to go, here's the pitch on its way and that one misses for ball one. One ball and no strikes. The count here on Jared Perry. Perry getting the start in left field today for Juan Diego. One and oh the count and we're set ready to go. The pitch on its way in there for a called strike and the count evens up here. One ball and one strike on Jared Perry. Campbell McGrain in the on-deck circle would hit if the inning continues here for Juan Diego. Looks like a right-hander beginning to get loose down in the bullpen for Spanish Fork. That one misses high. Ball two, two balls and a strike. Not sure necessarily how deep pitching staffs are, are built this early in the season. Maybe later on you're a little more set with pitching, but early on in the season sometimes you have to use a few more pitchers. Fly ball, Brady Brook in center calling everybody off. Reaches up and makes the catch. And the out is recorded there in the top half of the third inning. So no runs for Juan Diego. We head to the bottom of the third inning. Cy Nielsen to lead off for Spanish Fork. Let's take a moment here on Spanish Fork 17. Let's thank our sponsors. We want to thank Two Jacks Pizza, Triple T Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing, Dickerson Automotive, The Car Guys, Lance Wilson, State Farm Insurance, Mikel Christiansen, and Wise Attorneys at Law, at MVP Sports. As we thank them for making this broadcast today possible. We also want to remind you you can follow our pages on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube to keep up with the latest shows, live broadcasts, and our SF-17 staff. Just look for Spanish Fork 17. So Cy Nielsen will lead it off. It will be 3, 4, and 5. Cy Nielsen, Briggs Newman, and Brendan Bradford for Spanish Fork here in the bottom of the third inning as we take a look here at Dawson Stiefel will begin his next inning of work. Next week the Dons are Starting Region 8 play in three days on Tuesday. They'll get ready for 
uh, Maple Mountain, where they'll get ready to take on a very good Maple Mountain team, which we'll actually see once again here on Spanish Fork 17. And a little over an hour from now, as, Span as Maple Mountain will take on another team that we'll see later on in the year, I'm sure, at some point on Spanish Fork 17, as Cy Nielsen fouls that one, it looks like off his ankle. Have no balls and a strike. Maple Mountain will play the Pace and Lions. Then there will be a championship game down here from Desert Hills, Pleasant Grove, and Desert Hills. That's going to be interesting. That'll be 5A against 3A, which will be kind of an interesting matchup to kind of see. Generally, you don't see a lot of those 5A versus 3A matchups. As head coach Casey Nelson wanted to check on Cy Nielsen here, make sure he's okay. Doing a little bit of coaching right here with, I think he was kind of telling him, hey, this is where you want to hit it with the bat, not really on that inside part, but want to get the barrel on it. No balls and one strike to Cal, bottom of the third inning, 4-2 lead for Spanish Fork. The pitch to Cy Nielsen misses low, and the count evens up with one ball and one strike. Nielsen hit into an inning-ending 5-4-3 double play and is only at bat today. The 1-1 pitch misses low ball two, two balls and a strike. Two balls and one strike. The count here on Cy Nielsen. Brock, uh, Briggs Newman in the on-deck circle would hit next. The 2-1 pitch is going to be hit. That one's the center field. Going back is Gray. He come, now comes back to it, reaches up and makes the catch. And there's one out. That was one where there might have been a little more carry, but the wind right now and a lot of those fly balls going to kind of hold the ball in. That wind right now appears to be kind of blowing in from that center, sometimes from right field. So that could cause a problem for hitters. Here's Briggs Newman swinging first pitch, and he fouls one off down the third baseline. No balls and a strike to count on Briggs Newman. Newman doubled back in the second inning. Came around to score a run. I guess it will last inning for Spanish Fork. The 0-1 pitch, and Newman swings, hits that one well to left field. Going back down towards the line, looking up, and it's going to be foul down the line. Hit just around the 320 mark, and a visit out here. I think Dawson Stiefel we may have either have a pitching change or we may just have a conference on the mound, but... Spanish Fork starting to really get some good swings here. I think they've timed Stiefel's fastball. And they're starting to get some really good swings on the baseball. As the quick visit is over on the mound, uh, Briggs Newman will stand in with an 0-2 count. Bottom of the fourth inning. It's a 4-2 lead for Spanish Fork. If you're just joining us, the two-hour time limit is in effect for this ball game. So we kind of keeping as tracked as best we can with it. We may not necessarily get the full seven inning ball game in. The 0-2 pitch, the wind and the delivery home from Stiefel, breaking ball off the glove into the backstop. And it's one ball and two strikes here on Briggs Newman. Newman hit a couple of the balls deep to left field. Just kind of maybe hooked one foul. Here's the one-two pitch, breaking ball called, strike three, just froze him. After seeing that fastball, Stiefel able to freeze him. The first strike out of the ball game for Stiefel. And here's Brendan Bradford with two away in the third. Bradford walked and then came around to score for Spanish Fork. Stiefel here will come in first pitch and Bradford swinging chops that one foul past his third base coach. Spanish Fork has not, didn't really swing very early in counts against Pleasant Grove earlier today. But here against Juan Diego, definitely kind of swinging early. That one low for a ball, and it's one and one. And I think we have another kind of passing stray shower coming over us here. Can kind of feel a couple drops of rain falling. That one's going to roll over foul into the dugout. Spanish Fork here. There's no railing or anything to protect the players. And so if that ball comes flying into the dugout or one hops into the dugout, it's potentially going to hit somebody. The one-two pitch. Missed low and inside. Ball two. Stiefel and Juan Diego wanted that one. 
didn't quite get it, and it's two balls and two strikes. It's a 4-2 lead right now for Spanish Fork. Here's the 2-2 pitch on its way. That one's going to be chopped up and once again going to go foul into the Spanish Fork dugout. So Brendan Bradford giving him his, don't want to say souvenirs because you can't keep the baseball, but giving his teammates a, a wake-up call, I guess you could say. Two balls and two strikes, and Stiefel comes in. That one's going to be bounced to first, backhanded by Finn. He'll underhand as Stiefel covering, and the inning comes to an end. Three up and three down go the Dons in the third. We've played three from St. George. It's Spanish Fork 4, Juan Diego 2. You're watching High School Baseball on Spanish Fork 17. Top of the fourth inning here in St. George, Utah, and Juan Diego coming up. It will be five, six, or sorry, it will be seven, eight, nine. Campbell McGrain, Dalton Gray, and then the top of the lineup. So I'm going to correct myself for the third time. Eight, nine, and one coming up here as Dalton, is, as Dawson Stiefel will then hit. So here is Campbell McGrain. So Campbell McGrain, 0 for 1, as he popped out to short and his only at bat. And Parker Harrison, the right-hander, will get ready to go to work. Harrison will wind and deliver the first pitch on its way, and that one misses low for ball one. One ball and no strikes to count. Here on Campbell McGrain, Parker Harrison, number six, on the mound. The right-hander kicks and delivers the 1-0 pitch right on the outside corner, and the count evens up. One ball and one strike. Some mixed sun and clouds right now as the sun be continues to move around the field. That one swung out and missed, one and two. Starts in the morning coming up over the first base side and moves back around. And then ends the day coming in from dead left field. Here's the pitch on its way, and that one right off the plate, ball two. Two balls and a strike on McGrain. Everyone pretty much playing squared around the infield for the Dons. The pitch on its way. McGrain is squared up on that one, but it's going to be hit right at Brady Brook. He'll take a couple steps back, reach up, and make the catch. And there's one away. So a hard hit ball off the bat that maybe without so much wind might have had a little more carry on it, but Brady Brook is able to run it down. And with one gone, here's Dalton Gray. Gray, has, Gray is one for one, had a single in the second inning. And Parker Harrison's first pitch into it, and Gray grounds this one right to Pintar. He's up with it, throws the first in time for the second out of the inning. So Parker Harrison's being very efficient as he gets the second out of the inning right there. Back to the top of the lineup, here's, Dal here's Dawson Stiefel. Stiefel is one for two, had a single in the first and a ground out in the second. Parker Harrison, number six, going back to work. And the wind and the delivery on its way. Fastball misses high and tight. Ball one, one ball and no strikes. Juan Diego scoring two in the top of the first inning and then has been, hasn't been able to score since. That one misses low ball two, two balls and no strikes on Parker Harrison. The quick 2-0 pitch on its way, and Stiefel grounds. That one took a wicked hop on Briggs Newman. Nothing he could do about that. And Dawson Stiefel with his second hit of the ball game. Here's a hard hit, one shot right at first base. And the first baseman tried to backhand it, and, and the ball just started here and bounced right up. And there was no way that Stiefel was going to be able, or sorry, that Briggs Newman at first base was going to have a, a big play on it. And so now... Here comes Phil Hamill. Hamill singled and then came in uh, into score, walked back in the second. There he takes a called strike, and it's 0-1 on Phil Hamill. Working here as from the stretch is Parker Harrison as Stiefel gets his lead, ready to go from the stretch. The pitch on its way, fastball misses high, ball one. One ball and one strike the count on Phil Hamill.
Colin Helgeson, the catcher, would hit next if the inning continues here for Juan Diego. Working here from the stretch, the 1-1 pitch blocked in the dirt. A good stop right there by Josh Cowden, and it's two balls and a strike. So a good hitter's count here if you're Phil Hamill. Should get a pretty good-looking fastball here as a right-hander continues to throw down in the bullpen here for Spanish Fork. Two balls and a strike. The pitch on its way misses ball three. It's three balls and a strike. Warm uh, Throwing down there is number 18, Mason Nielsen. Mason Nielsen getting loose down in the bullpen for Spanish Fork. It's a three-and-one count to Phil Hamill. Harrison from the stretch and comes home. The 3-1, Hamill grounds this one to third. It's fielded cleanly by Tay Newman. The throw over to Briggs Newman is in time. And the out is recorded and the side is retired. Juan Diego gets one hit and they strand one. We head to the bottom of the fourth inning. It's 4-2 Spanish Fork here on Spanish Fork Community Network. Uh, let's go ahead and thank our sponsors for making this broadcast possible. We want to thank Triple T, Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing, Dickerson Automotive, Two Jacks Pizza, The Car Guys, Lance Wilson, State Farm Insurance, MVP Sports, and Mikel Chris Jansen and Wise Attorneys at Law. We thank them for making this broadcast possible. We also want to invite you to follow our pages on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube for the latest information on live broadcasts and shows, and also our SF-17 staff, just look for Spanish Fork 17 on your social media outlets. Bottom of the fourth inning, it will be a six, seven, and eight coming up for Spanish Fork. Josh Cowden, Tay Newman, and Andrew Pintar uh, coming up here as the Dons will look to try to see if they can maybe add to their lead here in the fourth inning as we take a look here at the time left, just about under an hour left in this ball game until so seven innings or just about 57 minutes or so according to my calculation so Josh Cowden who's one for one will get ready to lead it off for the Spanish Fork Dons who are looking to try to see if they can finish this tournament off with a really good three and one record the only the lone loss would be coming earlier today to Pleasant Grove and I don't really think that's a loss that you really hang your head your ha uh, hang your head on if you're Spanish Fork and the reason why I say that is because Pleasant Grove is a really good 5A team they play in a really good region in 5A um, and they will be one of those contenders up at the 5A state tournament that I think will give a lot of teams in the 5A class up at Kearns a lot of a lot of problems so here's Josh Cowden uh, Cowden on the night, like we said, a single came around to score a run in the second. Standing in from the right side, ready to go. And Stiefel kicks and delivers the first pitch, swung out and missed. Snowballs and a strike on Josh Cowden. Tay Newman in the on deck circle, and then it'll be Andrew Pintar. No balls and a strike, the 0 1 pitch. That one blocked in the dirt, and it's one ball and one strike to count on Josh Cowden. Infield up the middle will be playing back. The 1-1 one -one pitch, Cowden takes that one right on the outside corner for a ball. It's two balls and a strike on Josh Cowden. Cowden has had some good at-bats for the Dons here, not just in St. George, but leading up the last couple of weeks. The 2-1 pitch is going to be fouled away at the plate and evens the count up at two balls and two strikes. Be Maple Mountain and Payson to follow here at the state tournament. Or not here at the state tournament. I don't know what I'm thinking. It's not May yet. Here at the tournament down here in St. George. The 2-2 pitch on its way. Cowden swings, hits this one down the line, but foul. And it just hooked down over to the Spanish Fork bullpen. Not really a set spot, but they just kind of go down that first baseline onto the warning track and start to throw. Here's the 2-2 pitch on its way home. Breaking ball, Cowden able to hold up, and the count runs full. Three balls and two strikes on Josh Cowden. Stiefel kicks and delivers, comes in. That one's high and tight, ball four, and Josh Cowden is aboard for the second time in the ball game. I 
would imagine here we're going to see Carson Chapel come in to run over at first base. Here's Tay Newman. Newman hit into a fielder's choice. We will see Chapel come in to run. And over at first base, Chapel came in to run for Josh Cowden and ended up coming around to score the run. Stiefel will work here from the stretch. Tay Newman, number 15, stands in the box for Spanish Fork. Bottom of the fourth inning, 4-2 uh, game. That one's going to be bounced foul over a barehanded play made by somebody in that Spanish Fork dugout. And it'll be no balls and a strike here on Tay Newman. Double play depth up the middle with Rust and Hamill for Juan Diego. Then we'll hold the runner on at first. The pickoff move and diving back safely is Carson Chapel. Chapel not getting a really a, a very aggressive lead, a pretty conservative one. And here's the 0-1 pitch on its way, bouncing the dirt. It's going to skip a, away from the catcher Anderson and moving up will be Carson Chapel, so he'll advance and now Spanish Fork has a runner in scoring position with nobody out. And Tay Newman here has an opportunity with a swing of the bat to bring that run home. One ball and one strike here. Nobody out in the bottom of the fourth inning. Stiefel ready to go. Takes a look at second. Kicks and comes home with the 1-1. One -one. Blocked in the dirt. And Chapel thought about it and kind of clapped his hands together. I think... I think he kind of thought that he should have tried to take third base, but it'd be ball two. Two balls and a strike. The count here on Carson Chapel. Chapel gets his lead at second. Tay Newman at the plate. Here's the 2 1 pitch. That one missed ball three. Three balls and a strike. The count. And it'll be three balls and one strike here on Tay Newman. Newman ready to go here. And the 3-1 pitch. That one's going to be hit well to center field. Or sorry, over to right field and kind of losing it, then having to readjust, and he dropped it. He didn't make the catch out there. It was Rex. One run, or... Uh, Chapel will only get down to third base. Newman gets into second on a ball. I think that just went off kind of the palm of the glove of Easton Rex and Spanish Fork an opportunity really here to open this one up with runners on second and third and nobody out. And this will bring up Andrew Pintar. Pintar grounded into a 6-4-3 double play. And his last at bat back in the second inning, a nice double play that Juan Diego turned to get the get two big outs in that inning. Of course, after that, Spanish Fork would bring home a run or two, but that came with the bases loaded at the time for Spanish Fork, and to get out of it with only giving up a couple runs if you're Juan Diego, not a bad place to be. That one blocked in the dirt, ball one. It's one ball and no strikes to count on Andrew Pintar. Carson Chapel, the runner at third. Tay Newman, the runner at second for Spanish Fork. Stifle ready to go. Comes in and, and Pintar down the line. That's going to be fair. Chapel will score with ease. Right behind him is Newman. Pintar digging for two. The throw is offline. It's a two-run double for Andrew Pintar, and it's a 6-2 lead for Spanish Fork. Just a bouncing ball that the third baseman, McGrain, just couldn't quite get there. And just down the line did a nice job. And now I think we're going to have a pitching change here for Juan Diego in the fourth. As probably be a, a pitching change. They had an arm warming up down the right field line. And with Stiefel getting kind of roughed up, we'll see if he remains in the game, if he goes out to center field or not. 
as the new pitcher looks like Dalton Gray was going to come in from center field to pitch. So I would imagine that Stiefel will go out to center field. We'll kind of take a moment here to kind of get situated. Yeah, Stiefel will go to center field out where he's been playing most of the series, of the, well, not of the series, but of the tournament. Then what that's going to do is that will move... Sorry, we got a couple of changes. Stiefel will not go to center field. McGrain is going to come out, the third baseman, and Stiefel will go to third. So Stiefel will go to third here for them going into center field is going to be number 15. Lorenzo Soto. Soto will go into center field. So just a couple of changes here. The left-hander Dalton Gray will take over on the mound. And he will get, it's a, not a bad time to bring him in. You got a couple of back-to-back -back lefties in Jackson Higginson and Brady Brook. And what you're trying to do if you're Juan Diego is not let this one get out of hand. As Dalton Gray will come in. From center field. So here's Jackson Higginson. Higginson is one for one, had a single, and then came around to score a run back in the second inning. Gray will work here from the stretch. The runner, Pintar, gets his lead out at second base. Pitch on its way, and that one's going to be a bunt shown by Higginson. And it's pulled back for a ball, one ball and no strikes. Here as we get ready for baseball. Here on a Saturday turning evening. The 1-0 pitch about to come in. Gray kicks and comes in. That one, low ball two, two balls and no strikes the count on Jackson Higginson. If you're, if you're getting ready to, to tune in because of the 545 Maple Mountain game, that game's going to be pushed back a little bit. We played after the conclusion of this one, Maple Mountain and Payson. And Higginson there, I think, trying to thought the ball was going to break and kind of threw the bat up and fouled it away. The ball made contact. It doesn't matter whether you intend to swing. It just matters whether the ball makes contact or not. Two balls and a strike, ready to go, working from the stretch as Dalton Gray started the game in center field. And the pitch on its way. Higginson fouls that one back. Came in from center field the pitch. Uh, Stiefel goes to third base. Lorenzo Soto comes in in center field. Two balls and two strikes here. Nobody out in the bottom of the fourth inning. Spanish Fork has two runs already in. The pitch is going to be bounced to second. This is going to be fielded cleanly. They're going to have to hurry the throw, and I don't think, ooh, and they got him barely. A bang, bang play at first base, and they will get Higginson at first. Now for the Dons, two, Brady and the top of the lineup will come up for Spanish Fork. Here's Brady Brook. Brook has singled and flown out to center field on the afternoon. And he'll stand in for Spanish Fork. Lefty versus lefty matchup. The first pitch, Brooks swings and hits this one into right field. That's going to fall for a base hit. So coming in to score was the runner. That was Riley Hess who came in to run, I believe, for Andrew Pintar. RBI single for Brady Brook, his second RBI single of the ball game. And now Tanner Argyle will come to the plate. So Riley Hess scores the run for Pintar. And now with one gun, it's a 7-2 lead for the Spanish Fork Dons. Here's Tanner Ar Argyle lays the bunt down. This is going to be a tough play. Gray with the throw is low. It's going to get down the right field line. 
Going down to third, they're gonna wave all the way from first. Here comes Brady Brook, he will score. Going down to third is Tanner Argyle, and it's an 8-2 lead right now for Spanish Fork. And this one just kind of starting to get a little out of hand here as the throwing error on the low throw gets Argyle all the way to third. So here's Cy Nielsen. Nielsen grounded into double play and flew out to center for Spanish Fork. Dalton Gray working from the stretch, the pitch on its way in, and that one in there for a called strike, and it's 0-1. Maple Mountain has arrived. They're getting ready to head over to the batting cage. And not their best offensive output today. The 0-1 pitch swung on and fouled away, and it's quickly 0-2. They failed to get a run across to get in their semifinal against Desert Hills. They might have gotten, yeah, no, they didn't get that run across as Nielsen fouls it away. They had the bases loaded late in the ball game, but couldn't get the run across. Sight, and it looks like Sight Nielsen went down for the second out of the inning. So here's Briggs Newman. Newman doubled and came around to score a run and then struck out. And the pitch on its way. Newman fouls that one back to the screen. No balls and a strike to count. 8-2 Dons as you see the overlook here of the field. A nice facility down here in St. George. No balls and one strike the count, ready to go from the stretch. The kick and the delivery home is going to miss on the inside corner and low for a ball. The count's one and one here on Cy Nielsen. Or sorry, on Briggs Newman. Tanner Argyle running at third for Spanish Fork. The 1-1 one -one pitch on its way home, and that one's going to be Grounded to short, fielded by Rust. His throw over to first is in time, and the inning is over. Spanish Fork, however, though, they send eight to the plate here in the fourth. They come away with four runs, and at the end of four, it's an 8-2 lead for the Spanish Fork Dons. We'll take a break. When we come back, more baseball from St. George. Well, we head to the top of the fifth inning here in St. George, Utah. And right now, it's the Spanish Fork Dons on top, 8-2 to two over the Juan Diego Soaring Eagle. And the, what will be the Spanish Fork Dons' final game from down here in St. George over the next last three days as Mason Nielsen will come in to pitch for Spanish Fork out of the bullpen. So a good couple, a good about, well, about almost four innings of work for Parker Harrison. As he came in after Colby Gammon just had a tough start to his outing. Gave up back-to-back -back singles and then a couple of walks for Juan Diego. It looked like the Soaring Eagle might jump big time up on Spanish Fork. They got two across, but then the Dons have not allowed them to score the rest of the way. Here's Colin Helgeson, and he takes the first pitch outside for a ball. One ball and no strikes. Helgeson walked back in the first flew, and then flew out to center in the second. Mason Nielsen ready to go. The 1-0 pitch on its way. And that one's in there for a called strike. And the count evens up at 1-1. One one. The 1-1 one -one pitch on its way. And Helgeson swings through it. It's 1-2 the count on the Juan Diego catcher. That would be the Juan Diego designated hitter, actually. And that one's going to be grounded to second. Pintar gets there, throws the first in time, and there's one away. So Pintar gets the, records the out at first, and with one gone, here's Easton Rex. Rex walked and has struck out on the afternoon for Juan Diego. Mason Nielsen, number 18, ready to go on the first pitch. Bounces in the dirt, didn't quite get all the way to the catcher, and that one low for a ball. One ball and no strikes the count. Cooper Rust in the on-deck circle for Juan Diego. One ball and no strikes the count here on Easton Rex. 
Top of the fifth inning, an 8-2 lead for Spanish Fork. The 10 run rule is in effect in case that somehow comes into play and that one misses a way ball to two balls and no strikes. The other thing, the two hour time limit is also in play. And for every game today except the championship, the 2-0 pitch is gonna be popped up and fouled down the line. Be two balls and a strike. Rex gets ready to stand in. Two balls and a strike after he fouls that last one away. Kicks and delivers the 2-1 on its way. Swung out and missed, strike two. It's two balls and two strikes. The count on Easton Rex. Mason Nielsen working hard out on the mound here for Spanish Fork. The kick and the delivery comes. The 2-2 pitch checked his swing and fouls it back. And it's 2-2 two two the count here on Easton Rex. Spanish Fork will open up Region 8 play next week. That's where the, it's important to play your best baseball. Swung out and missed, strike three. Mason Nielsen gets his first strikeout of the ball game. And now here comes Cooper Rust. Rust has a sacrifice fly and then also a single in the third. So a very productive ball game here for, for Rust as he'll stand in. Here from the left side of the plate. Nielsen ready to go. The first pitch on its way. Swung out and missed. No balls and a strike on Cooper Rust. To qualify for the state playoffs, you need to finish in the top four spots in Region 8. Last year, the Dons got in after winning a play-in game. That went low for a ball. It's one ball and one strike. A play-in game between Uinta, Wasatch, and Spanish Fork. Here's the 1-1 one -one pitch, and the delivery on its way is misses for ball two. Two balls and a strike. They count on Cooper Rust. Juan Diego's last hit was Cooper Rust's. A single he had back in the third. The 2-1 pitch on its way home. Breaking ball right on the inside corner. The count evens up at two balls and two strikes here on Cooper Rust. Infield will play back for Spanish Fork. Outfield will be pretty much squared away. The 2-2 pitch, blocked in the dirt ball three, and the count runs full, three balls and two strikes on Cooper Rust. So an opportunity here for Juan Diego to get a base runner, a much needed base runner, and give their pitching staff a little bit of a, of a rest. 3-2 pitch, and Rust makes contact and just kind of fouls it away. We'll have another 3-2 pitch coming. Three balls and two strikes, the count ready to go. Nielsen winds, kicks, delivers. 3-2 pitch, misses outside, ball four. So Cooper Rust will draw the two-out walk, and that will bring the catcher, Matt Anderson, to the plate. Anderson struck out and then grounded out to, to the third baseman back in his last at bat. It took him a second to get the gear off, and now he'll head into the right-handed hitter batter's box. As the crowd begins to arrive for the Maple Mountain pacing game coming up here. First pitch on its way, breaking ball in there for a called strike. No balls and one strike, the count here on Matt Anderson. That will be our final game here of the day. We've had four straight games as the sun gets ready to peek through the clouds here. That one swung out and missed by Anderson. And it's no balls and two strikes to count here on Matt Anderson. Running over at first base, Cooper Rust gets his lead. Mason Nielsen from the stretch comes home, and that one's going to be swung out, popped up, and that one will go foul. And we'll get another 0 2 pitch as Juan Diego occupying the first base dugout, Spanish Fork the third base dugout as the home teams oftentimes in these games are determined by coin toss as Cooper Russ gets back safely to the bag. Here's the 2-1 pitch. That one swung on and grounded 
up the middle and Tanner Argyle mishandles the baseball and he has no throw so Juan Diego will get a couple of base runners here in the fifth inning. That's their first hit since Cooper Rust's single back in the third and here's Jared Perry. And we'll get someone out there running speed up I believe. Ladies and gentlemen, now batting for the Juan Diego Eagles, number 29, Joe Richardson. So a couple of pinch hitter, a pinch hitter coming in for Jared Perry. Uh, Joe Richardson, number 29, will hit in the spot here for Perry. So right now, Joe Richardson stands in here for Juan Diego. We're going to have a runner over at first base. That's Peyton Seam, number three. The runner over at first. That one misses low for a ball. One ball and no strikes to count. Seam will run for Matt Anderson. One ball and no strikes to count. Ready to go. Mason Nielsen comes in. Richardson fouls this one back. And it's evens the count up one ball and one strike. Top of the fifth inning here, 1-1 one, one game between these two teams, between Spanish Fork and Juan Diego. The 1-1 one, one pitch on its way home, breaking ball right on the outside corner. Two balls and a strike. They count here on Joe Richardson. Seam running over at first base. It's Cooper Rust out on second. Nielsen ready to go from the stretch. The 2-1 on its way. Misses low ball three. And now it's three balls and a strike on Jared Perry. Mason Nielsen having a hard time here finding the strike zone with a couple runners on base. Nielsen ready to go from the stretch. The 3-1 is in there for a called strike and the count will run full. So now Rust and Seam on the base pass. Can take off with the pitch. I'm sure we will see those runners take off. Runners go, 3-2 pitch. Richardson fouls it back to the screen and we'll do it again. Three balls and two strikes to count. On deck. Looks like it's another pinch hitter, Lorenzo Soto, who came in in center field. Richardson grounds that one to short. Argyle back on it, throws to first in time, and the top of the fifth inning comes to an end. So Juan Diego held off the scoreboard again here in the fifth. They do, however, though, get one hit. They leave two. We head to the bottom of the fifth inning. Spanish Fork sends up Brendan Bradford, Josh Cowden, and Tay Newman. Here, let's take a moment on Spanish Fork 17 to thank our sponsors for making this broadcast possible. We got the car guys, Triple T Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing, MVP Sports, Dickerson Automotive, Mikel Chris Jansen and Wise Attorneys at Law, Two Jacks Pizza, and Lance Wilson State Farm Insurance. We thank them for making this broadcast today all of our other broadcasts possible. We also invite you to follow us on our Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube pages where you can stay up to date on the latest shows, live broadcasts, and our SF-17 staff. Just look for Spanish Fork 17. So the sun is coming out. Dalton Gray will head out to the mound here to begin the bottom of the fifth inning, and Spanish Fork sends up the middle part of their lineup, a part of the lineup that has scored four of the eight runs. So kind of something to keep in mind here is that sun beams brightly in from left field as the clouds are starting to get separated here. For the most part, the clouds starting to go away. In fact, we'll probably have probably a good chance of sun the majority of the rest of the day, which means it will be great weather for those for the other constellation game between Maple Mountain and Payson and then the game that will follow the late game, which will be well dark by then. It'll be close to nine by the time the tournament championship game will get underway. As it's gonna be Brendan Bradford to stand in and lead it off here against Dalton Gray. Bradford wearing number 20, has a walk and a ground out and has came around to score a run. 
pitch on the on its way. Bradford takes that one. Low ball one. One ball and no strikes to count here on Brendan Bradford. Dalton Gray, the left-hander, back to work from the windup. And he will kick and deliver this one. Bradford chops that one right to Stiefel. He'll throw across the diamond, pulls the runner, and they got him. They're going to say that Finn got his foot back on the bag just barely probably in the nick of time to get Brendan Bradford. It was a bang-bang play, and a half a second different, and he might have been out, or he might have been safe. Here's Josh Cowden. Cowden has a single as and then and also a walk and then Carson Chapel has come has came in to run and Chapel scored two runs. That pitch low for ball one. One ball and no strikes the count. Ready to go, the one oh pitch, the kick and the delivery. That one's in there miss uh, gets in there for a strike and it's one and one. Ready to go. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch on its way. That one miss. Uh, I was going to say it's going to hit Josh Cowden on the on the elbow, and so Josh Cowden will be awarded first base on the hit by pitch. So Cowden to first, and then we'll see Carson Chapel. I believe it's going to be Chapel come in and run for him, and it will be. So Carson Chapel running over at first base. He scored twice when he's ran for Josh Cowden. And now that will bring to the plate, Tay Newman. Newman has reached on a fielder's choice and then what I'm gonna think is probably gonna go as down as an error against the right fielder. And that one off the glove and Carson Chapel puts his head down and will motor into second base on the passed ball. One ball and no strikes the count as standing back in the batter's box is Tay Newman. Andrew Pintar on deck to follow. And Newman hits this one well to right field going back and that one's going to go foul. Spanish fork, red top, white pants. Juan Diego in the all white uniforms in case you've joined us late. This one's been majority Spanish fork. They've have two innings today where they've scored four runs, a big uh, four-run fourth and a big four-run second for Spanish Fork. So if the trend holds, they should have a four-run sixth inning. As the pitch comes in, that one right on the outside corner and taken for a strike, and the count will move to one and two here on Tay Newman. Working from the stretch, the left-hander. The 1-2 on the on its way, and Newman hits this one to right center field. That's going to be potentially some trouble, and it's going to fall for a base hit. Coming around third, Chapel is going to try to score. The throw to the plate is not in time, and Carson Chapel will score, and that makes it 9 nothing in favor of Spanish Fork. So Andrew Pintar will come to the plate. The scoreboard has it as 10. But it's only 9 according to my count here. So here's Andrew Pintar. Pintar has grounded into a double play and had a two-run RBI double. The pitch on its way, and that one misses for ball one. One ball and no strikes. We'll see if they change it, but I think they just added two instead of one to the scoreboard. Ready to go. Here's the pitch on its way. Pintar, that one misses high. And then they did change it. 9-2 to two in favor of Spanish Fork. And the count moves to 2-0 and oh on Andrew Pintar. Dalton Gray working here from the stretch. Takes a look over at first. The 2-0 pitch is swung out and popped up. This is going to be potentially playable on the infield right up against the netting. And it will go foul. An extra probably about maybe half a foot, and that would have been playable as Finn, Anderson, and Gray were all over there to try to make the play. But it got back and went off the netting here that sits here at Desert Hills High School. 
One ball and one strike with one out here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Spanish Fork with one run already across. The pickoff move and back safely is Tay Newman. One run across here for Spanish Fork. Looking to try to add to that lead here in the fifth. One ball, one strike, the count. Working from the stretch, Dalton Gray takes a look at first, comes home, and that one there misses off the, gets in there for a called strike. It's one and two, the count, on Andrew Pintar. Jackson Higginson would follow if the inning continues. Gray comes home, Pintar swings and grounds that one past the third baseman into the left field corner. Taking the turn is Newman. He will be held at third. Pintar in with a stand-up double. His second double of the ball game. And the bats for Spanish Fork really starting to cruise now. And now I think we may have another pitching change as Spanish Fork starting to hit Dalton Gray. And we'll see here as I believe the head coach for Juan Diego will take the baseball here from Dalton Gray, and he will. So the baseball's taken from Dalton Gray. It's given into the hands of Phil Hamill, the second baseman. So Hamill will come in. Peyton Seam, it looks like, is going to enter the ball game at second base. And then I, I want to see here where, at that point, if Dalton Gray is going to go back out into center field. No sign of Dalton Gray yet going out into center field. But a 9-2 lead for Spanish Fork, and the 10-run rule is in effect here. Not that you want to see this one end with the 10 run rule, but Jackson Higginson at the plate represents, who will be coming up to hit, will represent the 10th run for Spanish Fork. And so something to keep in mind here in the next little bit, that would probably from a tournament standpoint, uh, would probably turn out to be pretty good to kind of help things get somewhat back on track. But still behind schedule here a little bit as a little bit was expected to, I mean, be behind schedule a little bit within reason with these two-hour time limits as Phil Hamill gets ready to conclude his warm-up tosses here any second now. One more game coming up for you here on Spanish Fork 17. The Maple Mountain Golden Eagles taking on the Payson Lions in which will be the final game of the day for us here on Spanish Fork 17. We've had a, it's going to turn out to be a quadruple header and when we say quadruple header, we mean quadruple header. Four straight games back to back. It has been a not, it's been a not a day of rest for us here at Spanish Fork 17. At least the crew down here in St. George, but nonetheless, a lot of fun at the same time. Great to be watching baseball. Jackson Higginson hits this one into deep left center field. It's going to be caught though by the left fielder Perry. The throw coming in as Tay Newman will score to make it 10 to 2 Spanish Fork. So the sacrifice fly gets Jackson Higginson an RBI and here's Brady Brook. Two gone here in the inning and Brady Brook will come to the plate. Brook a 2 for 3, two RBI singles on the on the afternoon. And then also to go along with a fly out to center field. Hamill comes in, and that one's going to be swung on and hit high into the air, going pretty deep, going back there, reaching up, making the catch. As he goes back towards the foul pole is the left fielder, Perry, and the inning is over. But the Spanish Fork Dons add a couple here in the fifth. At the end of five, it's Spanish Fork 10 and Juan Diego 2. You're watching high school baseball on Spanish Fork 17. Top of the sixth inning here in St. George, Utah, and Juan Diego will try and see if they can cut into this lead a little bit. It will be 8-9-1 uh, and one coming up, and it will be Lorenzo Soto who went into the spot that Campbell McGrain was originally hitting in. Be Lorenzo Soto, Dalton Gray, and then 
Dawson Stiefel. In fact, it won't be Dalton Gray. It'll be Peyton Seam who, who will hit in that spot. And then it will be Dawson Stiefel. So Mason Nielsen back to work and the first pitch to Lorenzo Soto misses low for ball one, one ball and no strikes. Soto came in in center field when Dalton Gray went to pitch. First at bat of the day for Soto and he fouls that one away. As that bright afternoon sun begins to come in here to St. George, really the first time we've had good sun today, that pitch outside for ball one. We had a little bit of it during the Maple Mountain uh, Desert Hills game, but not for very long, maybe a half an inning. Mason Nielsen comes in, that pitch swung on and missed. Strike two and the count evens up at two and two. Mason Nielsen, the right-hander, getting ready to go to work. Gets the sign. And here's the 2-2 pitch on its way. That one right there just off the plate, ball three. Three balls and two strikes. On Lorenzo Soto, ready to go. Here's Mason Nielsen with the delivery. That one swung out and missed, strike three. Down on strikes goes Lorenzo Soto. That's strikeout number two for Mason Nielsen, and here's Peyton Seam. Seam is making his first plate appearance of the afternoon as well. He came in defensively when they made a change with last inning, the first pitch in there for a called strike, and it's 0-1. Ready to go, here's the 0-1 pitch. And that one swung out, popped up, that one will go foul. Been a kind of a tough tournament for Juan Diego. They've had to play against opponents who really have been in a different classification. They've had to play up a classification here for the most part in this tournament. Pitch on its way, that one misses low, ball two, or ball one, one ball and two strikes. But I, I'll give Juan Diego a lot of credit. They have played hard. No matter what the score is, they've played like they're trying to win the ball game, and that's been a really nice thing to see. That one fouled away, one and two. Sometimes it's easy when your things just aren't going your way to just kind of roll over and go, okay, I don't know how much I really want to do this, but I guess I'll play. And it's good to see that Juan Diego continue to fight, and they're continuing to battle. Here's the pitch as Seam fouls that one away out of the glove of Josh Cowden. And it'll be one ball and two strikes on Peyton Seam. Argyle, Nielsen, and Briggs Newman coming up in the bottom of the sixth inning. The right-hander comes set. That one's going to be bounced over to second. Pintar finds it, throws the first in time, and there's two away. So two gone, and here is Dawson Stiefel. Stiefel, two for three at the plate this afternoon. A couple of singles scored a run back in the first inning, and he will stand in. Stiefel ready to go. First pitch on its way home, and Stiefel swings and misses. No balls, no, no balls and one strike. Play just past six o'clock here in St. George. The 0-1 pitch about to get ready to come home and the wind and the delivery on its way. That one's going to be popped up down the line. That one will go foul and it'll be no balls and two strikes. They count here on Dawson Stiefel. Pitch on its way. That one misses low and outside for a ball. It'll be one ball and two strikes on Stiefel on Stiefel. Sun beaming in from left field, kind of the way it was the other night. Here's the one-two pitch. The kick and the delivery comes in, and Stiefel hits that one. Foul down the line. Brendan Bradford gave it a look, but it goes foul. On deck is Phil Hamill if the inning should allow Hamill to get up. He 
Here's the one-two pitch on its way. Stiefel grounds this one to second. Pintar up with it. His throw to first is in time, and the inning is over. So down goes Juan Diego, one, two, three in the sixth. We head to the bottom of the sixth inning. Tanner Argyle, and it will be Cy Nielsen and Briggs Newman coming up. Two, three, and four for Spanish Fork. Coming up here as the Dons, if they score, they need two runs to end it with the 10 run rule. If not, we'll just go to the top of the seventh inning and uh, Juan Diego will have their final shot here. Let's take a moment to thank our sponsors here on Spanish Fork 17. We want to thank the car guys, Triple T Heating, Cooling and Plumbing, MVP Sports, Dickerson Automotive, Mikel Chris Jansen and Wise, Attorneys at Law, Two Jacks Pizza, and Lance Wilson State Farm. We thank them for making this broadcast possible. We also want to remind you to follow Follow our pages on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram to keep up with the latest shows, live broadcasts, and our SFCN staff. Uh, just look for Spanish Fork 17 on those. Uh, we'll get ready to play here in the bottom of the fifth inning. And we kind of wonder if head coach Casey Nelson won't do kind of what he did yesterday in the ball game. If he'll go to that bench a little bit more, and it looks like Caden Bear. Uh, Caden Berry, number nine, has grabbed a bat. And it looks like we might see some pinch hitters coming up here for uh, Spanish Fork. Two, three, and four coming up here. And it will be a new pitcher out on the mound, number 24. Will come in and pitch for Juan Diego. Phil Hamill. So Hamill isn't really, well, isn't new. He, he came in last inning. Here's Caden Berry, though, to, to lead it off. He'll hit in the spot for Tanner Argyle. Now batting number nine, Berry. So here's Berry. We'll see who it's going to be kind of as we go as some different players have grabbed bats. But we saw that Casey Nelson did this in game one, got some, and did this yesterday against Juan Diego, and the reserves actually what got Spanish Fork to that 10 run rule. Hamill will come in, first pitch on its way, misses low and away with the fastball to Caden Berry. It's one ball and no strikes. Payson and Maple Mountain to follow. The 1-0 pitch on its way, and that one in there for a called strike, and the count evens up here at one and one. It's a 10-2 lead for Spanish Fork, bottom of the sixth inning. And here's the 1-1 pitch. Hamill kicks and delivers this one home. That one misses off the plate for a ball. And it's two balls and a strike on, on Caden Berry. Caden Berry, number nine, standing in from the right side. And here's the 2-1 pitch on its way. That one misses for ball three. Three balls and a strike on Caden Berry. I think Caden Berry kind of wondering if that didn't hit him, but no agreement from our home plate umpire. Here's the pitch. That one high and tight. And now, I'm sorry, now the count goes full. Three balls and two strikes. Counts full on Caden Berry. The 3 2 pitch on its way. Swings and pops it up. And that one will go foul. So we'll get another 3 2 pitch coming here. For Spanish Fork, trying to see here who else is grabbing a bat. For Casey Nelson and the Dons. Three balls and two strikes. The count on Berry. Hamill kicks and delivers this pitch. And that's going to be off the helmet. So either way, ball four, but Barry gets on via the free pass, the hit by pitch. And that's going to bring up, it's not going to be Cy Nielsen, it's going to be number 23, Dylan Hall. So Hall will hit for Nielsen in this spot, and Hall will stand in from the right side. Barry gets his lead over at first and ready to go. Here's the pitch. 
That one's right there for a called strike, and it's 0-1. The sun is out at least right now for the moment being. Some more clouds linger off in the distance. No balls and a strike to pitch on its way. That ball by Hall is going to be hit through the right side for a base hit. Barry's going to be stopped at second. The throw comes in. It's cut off. So back-to-back -back single or back-to-back -back base runners now. That's going to bring up the spot that would have been Briggs Newman, but that is going to be Carson Chapel. So Carson Chapel, who has scored two runs as a runner in the ball game, will come in and hit for Briggs Newman here at first base. So you're seeing some wholesale changes around the diamond. Runners on at first and second. 10-2 lead right now for Spanish Fork. And the pitch on its way to Chapel. That ball misses inside ball one. One ball and no strikes on Carson Chapel. Brendan Bradford in the on deck circle will hit next. I guess I don't know if it would, would be Brendan Bradford. It's not going to be Bradford. Somebody else has grabbed a bat. One ball and no strikes the count. Hamill delivers to Chapel. That one's in there for a called strike. Chapel hit in the game yesterday against Juan Diego. Chapel had an RBI double in the same sixth inning. So both of these games have been similar. Chapel take a, takes a big cut there and comes up empty. The game on the game yesterday morning was the first game of the day, and Spanish Fork went down by uh, went down uh, won the game in six innings by the ten run rule. One ball and two strikes here to, to Carson Chapel. Hamill will work from the stretch, takes a look out at second base, and comes home with a one-two pitch. Called strike three, Carson Chapel down on strikes. The first strikeout for Hamill, and now we'll see here who's going to come to the plate for Spanish Fork. I think they just made wholesale changes all over the place. And so Brock Beckstrom will come in to hit here now for Spanish Fork. Beckstrom pitched yesterday. for Spanish Fork, won one of the MVP sports, MVPs of the game. That one swung out and missed. No balls and a strike to Beckstrom. Hamill working here from the stretch, one out here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Comes in, that one's gonna be swung out and popped up, hit down the line, and that one will go foul. The interesting thing is we only have about five minutes left on the game clock. So I just kind of wonder if they won't just call the game here at the end of the inning. That's what they kind of did similar in the Pace and Juan Diego game earlier this morning. The 0-2 pitch misses low for a ball. It's one ball and two strikes. The key out here on Brock Beckstrom. Running on at second base is Caden Berry. Over at first is Dylan Hall. Here comes the one-two pitch. And that one's popped up, and that one will be fouled away. And it'll be one and two on Brock Beckstrom. Josh Cowden has a bat in the on-deck circle. He would be ready to hit if needed here in the inning. One ball and two strikes here with one gun in the bottom of the sixth inning. Runners get their lead. The pitch on its way is going to be a call. It's strike three. Beckstrom down on strikes. Back-to-back -back strikeouts here for Phil Hamill. And now that's going to bring up Josh Cowden. Cowden in the ball game has been hit by a pitch, has walked and singled all each time. Carson Chapel, who's who went down on strikes earlier with the bat in the inning, has ran for him, and each time Carson Chapel's come around to score. Cowden takes the first pitch, a called strike, and it's 0-1. 
Running on at second base, Caden Berry over at first base. It's going to be Dylan Hall. Here's the 0-1 pitch on its way. If that one's going to get to the backstop, that will be 90 feet for both base runners. And now each runner moves up into scoring position. That one just didn't quite get there. Matt Anderson didn't have a huge shot to keep that one in front of him. It just kind of spun to the backstop. And it's going to be one ball and two strikes. Sorry, one ball and one strike here on Josh Cowden. A base hit here very well may end the ball game here with Dylan Hall on the base paths. Hamill comes set and delivers the fastball away for a ball, and it's two balls and a strike. They count on Josh Cowden. Our runners are getting their leads on the base paths. Hamill working here from the stretch. And the pitch on its way. Cowden swings and hits that one into right field. That will score one. Dylan Hall coming around third. The relay throw is not going to be in time, and that should be the ball game as Spanish Fork will finish off the 10-run rule here in the sixth inning and will get a 12-2 victory over the Juan Diego soaring eagle. A two-run single by Josh Cowden. Takes care of it right there as Spanish Fork and Juan Diego will finish out their run of the tournament. The Dons go 3-1. and one. Not bad. Their only loss came earlier today to a, a very good Pleasant Grove team. So we're going to take a break here on Spanish Fork 17 for the in-between ball games. When we come back, we'll have the Maple Mountain Golden Eagles and the Payson Lions, the final game of our day here on SFCN. We'll start probably in somewhere around 20 to 25 minutes. You're watching High School Baseball on Spanish Fork 17.